Hello and thank you for downloading this episode of On Farm. This is the second of two episodes that we've recorded with a friend of mine, Suzanne Mulholland, who's known to many of you on social media as The Batch Lady. So do go back and listen to episode one for the full chat. Uh, Suzanne's book is out, The Batch Lady, funnily enough it's called, and it's available from all good booksellers. We recorded this episode in Suzanne's stunning farmhouse kitchen in the Scottish Borders where she creates all of her video content. And in this episode, she got me to roll my sleeves up and get stuck into some batching. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, Anna, so while we're having this chat, I'm going to show you exactly how easy batch cooking can be. Okay? Wow. So we are going to get involved, do I? Oh, yes. Oh, Oh, yeah, definitely. So we are going to take some ready roll pizza dough, you know, just like you buy anywhere. So around one of them. Uh And I'm going to give you this one. And we're going to make uh, two calzones Ooh, ready amazing. for the freezer, okay? What we're going to do is um, I'll give you your pizza dough here. Okay, thank you. You are going to chop a bit and of a And you can pepper. get pizza dough in the, the cheaper sort of Aldi Lidl, do some brilliant yes, ones. So yeah. yeah, and they're so cheap, cheapest way to make pizza. And then you can have it for whenever you want. So just give us a few slices of, of your peppers. Pepper, right. So I'm just unrolling this. And it's really simple to make. So the kids um, will love this one. Now, what I do is usually show you how to make a savoury one. And then because you're in the mood and you're making it this way anyway, you can make a sweet one. So the savoury one's going to be with pepperoni, mozzarella and some peppers and a jar of... um, pizza sauce that I've actually made before but you can just buy a jar of pizza oh, sauce see. as well yes. so it's entirely up to you. Is the pizza sauce recipe in your book or on your website? It is. There's some really good sauce recipes in the back as well oh, that you can make. Okay. So um yeah that's fine. That's, that's all we yeah. need. Yep. Now if you want to do this even quicker you can use frozen chopped peppers. Oh okay. yes I've seen them. So mm-hmm. what you're going to do is just pour a bit of your pizza sauce on half, only on half of okay. it and you're going to do yours on half. Right. Off you go. That's perfect. That's enough? Yep. You yep. don't need too much. Then you're going to grab your pepperoni. So these okay. are just pepperoni slices like you yes. buy out the supermarket, yep. you know. And you can put anything. You can put chicken. You can put anything you want at all. Mm. And you can just sort of, you could use a spoon, but we're just bunging just it together. Just use the pepperoni so slices off like you go. a little spoon to like spread a little out spoon. the sauce. Okay. Okay. Then you're going wow. to add your peppers in. So just grab some peppers. If your kids don't like peppers, you could add sweet corn. You can change it up to whatever you want, really. We're going to add some... Let's add some green peppers in. Okay. You've got a lovely top on. I don't want to get it covered. Everybody always comments that I um, always wear a white shirt when I cook. Yes, that's brave. (laughs) Yeah, it's because I have a white shirt thing going on do you know it's blue jeans and a white shirt means Uh, i'm the batch lady if i wear anything else i feel like myself and i lose my confidence (laughs) it's funny because when you opened the door today when i arrived i thought oh yes that's not not it's not a uniform but i thought yes i do associate you with the smart crisp white shirt yeah Yeah. it is really a uniform it really helps me feel like that's me in character in a different mode yes right grab some some green green peppers So we've already put on our pizza sauce, our pepperoni, our peppers. We're going to use some already grated mozzarella that you can just buy again from the shops. You could grate it if you want, but we're all about saving time. So you're just going to grab some and throw it on. Um, And these are great. I mean, if you've got kids at home for a long period of time, get them to make these Mm. and put them in the freezer. This is the whole great thing about batching. What you're going to do is you're going to pull the other half of the round pizza dough and you're going to pull it over the top. Right over the top. You're sort of making a pocket. Yeah, and it's Mm -hmm. all covered up. And then you're going to start at one edge and you're going Mm -hmm. to roll. Pull and roll. Oh, right. Just I'm left-handed. I'm twist it around. Oh, you're a lefty. I didn't yes. know that. Does that make sense? Like you're this? just pulling it. And what you're doing yeah. is you're just making it into a parcel. Yes. It's a, oh, dear. Hopefully to stop stop leaking but I have a bit yes, of leakage so exactly. in exactly you don't want a bit of leakage but if you no. do end up don't worry I love things to look properly rustic and homemade because yes. then nobody thinks I've shop bought it exactly exactly okay so just work your way nobody around nobody would think that these days though would they and uh, you'd be surprised I cheat at a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> um right there we've made two calzones they go oh, we made the, them in about, about minute. seven minutes yes um, wow. so if i was doing the sweet one now so mm-hmm. i put these two i just wrap that over that goes in the freezer just like that yes and um, when it comes out straight on a tray from frozen 20 minutes and you've got an easy family wow. 
dinner. And then if you're going to do a sweet one, I would chop up some bananas, add some Nutella um, and a few marshmallows. And the kids will oh, love actually, it. I was sorting out my cupboard the other day and I found some mini marshmallows. So that's what I can do with them. There you go. So yes. already just in seven minutes, we've got two ready for the freezer. Fabulous. Wow, that's amazing. Love it. Love it, love it. Most people have heard of you and are familiar with what you do, but for those who haven't, would you say your recipes are quite suitable for a a beginner cook and somebody who does not consider themselves to be adept in the kitchen? Oh, without a doubt. Mm. Yeah, I mean, really, that's who my recipes are for. Really simple, basic, easy meals that that you won't find lemongrass in any of my recipes. You know, (laughs) they're all pretty bog standard easy recipes I do show you how to use them up so if a one pot dish you can take out stuff for your kids and then you can use it up with some chili and fresh herbs (laughs) I know I love using it's my new word I want to get it in the dictionary um I'd love to hear have you had many men get in touch with you about about batch cooking I do have about five percent of men yes who follow me um quite a lot of older men actually so because I do lots with um portion control and frozen sort of chopped vegetables Mm -hmm. um it's really good for people that have dexterity issues you know for that can't chop or anything like that and there is actually quite a few I follow quite a lot of um farmer's wife sort of things and uh, I'm amazed at how many men do Mm. actually cook so um yeah it's definitely more um more ladies but I've still got that sort of like small amount of men and I feel really bad because I always talk about Hello, ladies. <laughs> yes, I know, but it's difficult. I mean, my husband's actually an excellent cook, but he only does it on the spur of the moment. I cannot get him to plan in advance. So it's literally, oh, I'm going to go to the shops now. We were lucky because we live c- close to the shops. I'm going to go to the shops now to get something for supper. And that's kind of fine for him because at least I'm not having to cook and he's re- removing that burden. But I wish he would get involved in batch cooking because I think it would make all our lives easier, including his, actually. Um, I think for any of us, uh, male or female, I mean, who the hell told us once we got to the ripe old age of getting married that every day we were going to have to decide what to eat for dinner? I mean, nobody nobody explains that to you when you're a teenager that that's going to happen. It's a mental burden, isn't it? It's It's, awful. Yeah, Yeah, I absolutely hate it. It's (laughs) like, you know, I I can sometimes be feeding my children um, breakfast and they're asking me what's for dinner. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it really is a mental burden so um and I think whether you're male or female uh, get, having that burden taken away oh, would be quite absolutely. nice <laughs> and, so, and so what you use is the famous blackboard which I had to have my photo taken with whereby at the beginning of the week you work out what or decide what you're having on each of the five days of the week and therefore burden erased Yes, in an ideal world, yes. And it does work quite a lot of the weeks. I use it definitely like that. Um, It doesn't always go to plan, as everybody knows Mm. who tries to plan in advance. So what I always say is I generally plan four to five meals out of the week because then I can use those. But there's plenty of times that it's not going to work. Nobody's hungry or um, and it means I've not wasted any food. But yeah, I generally try to write it on the board. And the reason I try to write it on the board is to stop anybody from asking me what <laughs> yes. is for dinner that night look at the board you can look at the board yes um so yeah it does help and it really um yeah it just it helps everybody it helps yeah. the kids stopping asking me it stops my husband asking me and actually reminds me of what I'm doing so when I look at the board at six o'clock when I'm serving um dinner I can then see what's due out of the freezer for the next game day mm-hmm. and instantly take it out so I just have it on my iPhone at six o'clock it sets an alarm to tell me to take the next meal out oh amazing yeah so yeah organize as well as the the physical act of cooking and being very good at cooking which you are it's it, it's just kind of really hitting home to me although in a way it had but the the fact that it's all about organization and knowing what's what and and having seen your freezers outside do you have a kind of in- inventory of of what's in those freezers or is it is that a mental inventory no, I do have sort of on the outside of the freezer, you probably didn't see it round the corner. And I do sort of write what's going in and mm. what's going out. And it all goes to pot sometimes, yes, like it does yeah. in everybody's life. Um, but quite often it does work. And I've got a general sort of, because what you don't want to do is a lot of people, well, most people, your freezer is where everything goes to die, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's just in between the bin. You feel a bit bad, so you put it in the freezer and then you clean yeah. out the freezer and it goes in the bin. Really what you want to do is just keep 
using things that are in your freezer. That's the whole point of putting the meals in is that you actually use them. So if you've got a list, it's really good because you're actually using that stuff. We all end up with UFOs, unidentified frozen objects that nobody (laughs) knows what they are. And so sometimes I'll just use a UFO and bring it out and we hope for the best, see what we get. I had one not that long ago, which was a you know, sometimes you can kind of improvise, but I ended up with peach sauce when I thought I was getting chicken stock. So that was, uh, that kind of ruined my soup, but um, they'll teach me to write on things, won't it? <laughs> yeah, um, my kids would have actually loved that because we've quite often ended up with beetroot soup instead of Mackey's ice cream. So yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, if there's a, if there's one top tip, it's right every you know label yeah, everything label that goes things. in. So a sharpie pen, actually, I should have added that. Sharpie pen is always good to yeah. write on. And then if you want to reuse the bag, um, you can just use a tiny little bit of nail polish remover, and the sharpie pen comes right off. Another top tip, and actually, you'd remind him as well of. of Probably your the tip that has made the biggest impact on my life actually is the baked potato tip. Can you give us the baked potato tip about cooking them in advance and, and what you do with them? Yeah, so we are really sort of you know on a Sunday we'll have an old fashioned sort of everybody around the table with grandparents and we'll have a you know a, a proper Sunday lunch. So when I'm organising that, I just put four baked potatoes and four sweet potatoes in the oven because the the oven's on. So um, and then. Once they're cooked, leave them to cool, put them in a Tupperware tub in your fridge and then you have an instant ready to go. It literally takes, if you've got an aga, then shove it in there, aga for 10 minutes and you've got a proper oven baked mm. baked potato for the middle of the week. And um, and if you don't have an aga, you can still just put it back in the, in the oven and literally you can then have lovely oven baked potatoes throughout the week and especially for what's going on at the moment you know potatoes last a long time mm-hmm. in your store cupboard yes. which is great and then also once you've cooked them and you leave them to cool and put them in your fridge you'll get five days of those potatoes yeah, that's amazing so um top tip yeah and then you've always got a lunch as well yes yes a healthy filling lunch yeah we're doing a lot of tips but actually i think that's what people yeah. will be really keen to hear as well as well as the story um and for a long time um you were doing i guess time's a bit limited now that that uh, you've got the book out and everything so you, you're kind of slowing down on the demonstrations a wee bit um so i was doing lots of sort of wi demos and i did mm. a demo um uh, over in east lothian and i've done lots of ones the highland show was amazing mm. as well last year and no the plan was to step up a lot more because now we're planned to do a lot with the book so um so we were going to be doing lots of book tours and lots of signings and I was due back at the Highland show again which would have been fantastic um so everything obviously has stopped at the moment just with Mm. what's going on but no I think more and more um you know once everything's back up and running then yeah I will be as busy as ever and back to it I love doing demos I feel really nervous when I first do it but mm-hmm. then when I do it, it was a bit like um who you had on um your lovely who's who's lovely comedian farmer that I listen to Jim Smith Jim Smith, Jim Smith. Yeah. so it's a bit like Jim was saying when he does his sort of stints of comedy the same is that you do get that sense of like gosh people really liked it yeah and it makes yeah. you feel good and you think oh I want to do more of them so mm-hmm. it's the same sort of similar principle yeah, I'd say you buzz. yes yeah when you see that and the, the look on people's faces and the engagement as well the demos that I've been to People are you know, really kind of really engaging and asking questions as well. It's not just an audience and you situation. It's kind of comes a conversation in some ways. Yeah, well, I think because as well, I mean, you very touched on the fact that you said I was a good cook, which I'm actually not that good a cook. <laughs> um, so I like to keep it real. So it quite often all goes wrong in the demos as well, which people... So when I was doing the demo for the Highland Show, I was doing fish chowder and fish pie and showing how you make both of them together and it saves a great amount of time. And at the end, somebody in the audience says, do you know you didn't add the fish to the fish chowder? <laughs> So we just bunged it in. So there's a lot of just bung it in and, and hope for the best. But I think that's how the majority of us cook oh, on yeah, a day to day basis. So. so, yeah, there's there's no point denying it. You know, with with coronavirus, we, we are in tricky times. Um, but actually, I think coming here today to meet you and learn about batch cooking is extremely relevant because I think it can it can really help, not just if you're stuck indoors, but also if you need to try and feed your family when uh, you can't get out to the shops. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of your listeners, you know, will be rural and we're all used to cooking like this. You know, we're all used to doing this where we're quite often isolated for, I, I live at a thousand feet for bad weather. We're quite often not out for two weeks at a time. So we're used to doing this naturally anyway. You know, if I was to be um, confined for two weeks, I would have enough um, to get going with. And it's harder for people who have been used 